Today's reading begins in Genesis chapter 18, starting in verse 16. The men rose up from there and looked towards Sodom. Abraham went with them to see them on their way. The Lord said, Will I hide from Abraham what I do, since Abraham will surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed in him? For I have known him, to the end that he may command his children and his household after him, that they may keep the way of the Lord, to do righteousness and justice, to the end that the Lord may bring on Abraham that which he has spoken of him. The Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether their deeds are as bad as the reports which have come to me. If not, I will know. The men turned from there and went toward Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Abraham came near and said, Will you consume the righteous with the wicked? What if there are fifty righteous within the city? Will you consume and not spare the place for the fifty righteous who are in it? May it be far from you to do things like that, to kill the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be like the wicked. May that be far from you. Shouldn't the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, See now, I have taken it on myself to speak to the Lord, although I am dust and ashes. What if there will lack five of the fifty righteous? Will you destroy all the city for lack of five? He said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. He spoke to him yet again, and said, What if there are forty found there? He said, I will not do it for the forty's sake. He said, Oh, don't let the Lord be angry, and I will speak. What if there are thirty found there? He said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, See now, I have taken it on myself to speak to the Lord. What if there are twenty found there? He said, I will not destroy it for the twenty's sake. He said, Oh, don't let the Lord be angry, and I will speak just once more. What if ten are found there? He said, I will not destroy it for the ten's sake. The Lord went his way as soon as he had finished communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. The two angels came to Sodom at evening. Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. Lot saw them and rose up to meet them. He bowed himself with his face to the earth, and he said, See now, my lords, please come into your servant's house. Stay all night, wash your feet, and you can rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, but we will stay in the street all night. He urged them greatly, and they came in with him and entered into his house. He made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, surrounded the house, both young and old, all the people from every quarter. They called to Lot, and said to him, Where are the men who came in to you this night? Bring them out to us, that we may have sex with them. Lot went out to them through the door, and shut the door after himself. He said, Please, my brothers, don't act so wickedly. See now, I have two virgin daughters. Please let me bring them out to you, and you may do to them what seems good to you. Only don't do anything to these men, because they have come under the shadow of my roof. They said, Stand back. Then they said, This one fellow came in to live as a foreigner, and he appoints himself a judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. They pressed hard on the man Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men reached out their hand, and brought Lot into the house to them, and shut the door. They struck the men who were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. The men said to Lot, Do you have anybody else here, sons-in-law, your sons, your daughters, and whomever you have in the city? Bring them out of the place, for we will destroy this place, because the outcry against them has grown so great before the Lord that the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, who were pledged to marry his daughters, and said, Get up, get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But he seemed to his sons-in-law to be joking. When the morning came, then the angels hurried Lot, saying, Get up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the iniquity of the city. But he lingered, and the men grabbed his hand, his wife's hand and his two daughters' hands, the Lord being merciful to him, and they took him out and set him outside the city. It came to pass, when they had taken them out, that he said, Escape for your life. Don't look behind you, and don't stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be consumed. 
Lot said to them, Oh, not so, my lord. See now, your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have magnified your loving kindness, which you have shown to me in saving my life. I can't escape to the mountain, lest evil overtake me and I die. See now, this city is near to flee to, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape there. Isn't it a little one, and my soul will live? He said to him, Behold, I have granted your request concerning this thing also, and I will not overthrow the city of which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I can't do anything until you get there. Therefore the name of the city was called Zor. The sun had risen on the earth when Lot came to Zor. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and on Gomorrah sulfur and fire from the Lord out of the sky. He overthrew those cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew on the ground. But Lot's wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Abraham went up early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and towards all the land of the plain, and saw that the smoke of the land went up as the smoke of a furnace. When God destroyed the cities of the plain, God remembered Abraham, and sent Lot out of the middle of the overthrow, when he overthrew the cities in which Lot lived. Lot went up out of Zor, and lived in the mountain, and his two daughters with him, for he was afraid to live in Zor. He lived in a cave with his two daughters. The firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in to us in the way of all the earth. Come, let's make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve our father's family line. They made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father. He didn't know when she lay down, nor when she arose. It came to pass on the next day that the firstborn said to the younger, Behold, I lay last night with my father. Let's make him drink wine again tonight. You go in and lie with him, that we may preserve our father's family line. They made their father drink wine that night also. The younger went and lay with him. He didn't know when she lay down, nor when she got up. Thus both of Lot's daughters were with child by their father. The firstborn bore a son, and named him Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. The younger also bore a son, and called his name Ben-Ami. He is the father of the children of Ammon to this day. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, starting in verse 25. Therefore I tell you, don't be anxious for your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, nor yet for your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food, and the body more than clothing? See the birds of the sky, that they don't sow, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you of much more value than they? Which of you, by being anxious, can add one moment to his lifespan? Why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil, neither do they spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not dressed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today exists and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, won't he much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore don't be anxious, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? Or with what will we be clothed? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, don't be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Each day's own evil is sufficient. Don't judge so that you won't be judged. For with whatever judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with whatever measure you measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but don't consider the beam that is in your own eye? Or how will you tell your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and behold, the beam is in your own eye, you hypocrite, first remove the beam out of your own eye, and then you can see clearly to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. Don't give that which is holy to the dogs, neither throw your pearls before the pigs, lest perhaps they trample them under their feet, and turn and tear you to pieces. Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. To him who knocks it will be opened. Or who is there amongst you who, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, who will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you desire for men to do to you, you shall also do to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter in by the narrow gate. 
For the gate is wide, and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter in by it. How narrow is the gate and the way is restricted that leads to life. There are few who find it. Psalm 8, beginning in verse 1. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of babes and infants you have established strength because of your adversaries, that you might silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you think of him? What is the son of man that you care for him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and crowned him with glory and honor. You make him ruler over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and cattle, yes, and the animals of the field, the birds of the sky, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes through the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Proverbs chapter 2, beginning in verse 6. For the Lord gives wisdom, out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He lays up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, that he may guard the paths of justice, and preserve the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good path. For wisdom will enter into your heart, knowledge will be pleasant to your soul, discretion will watch over you, understanding will keep you, to deliver you from the way of evil, from the men who speak perverse things, who forsake the paths of uprightness, to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil, and delight in the perverseness of evil, who are crooked in their ways, and wayward in their paths. Music